Hello, in this video we're going to talk about the definition of mens rea terms. This is something that we deal with in chapter 3 of the textbook. Now I'm not here going to talk about the sort of the minute detail of those definitions, of course that's something within the textbook itself, but rather I want to give you a few general tips or areas of caution that you should think about whilst you're revising in particular uh, mens rea terms for an exam. Now, the first thing to remember, always of course, is that you need to understand the definitions of these terms in order to be able to apply any criminal offence that has any kind of mens rea requirement. So, these are essential building blocks for your knowledge and your ability to apply any of the offences outside of those, apart from strict liability offences. The other thing to remember here is that these are legal terms. So even though, for example, words like recklessness we use in common parlance, we're not talking about the common understanding, we're talking rather about a legal definition. And this is true of intention and recklessness and other mens rea terms of a similar kind. It's most often a problem actually for recklessness because people often think of the term recklessness and they think of reckless behaviour, quite naturally, because generally in common parlance when we talk about recklessness we're talking about a description of behaviour. Remember when we're talking about recklessness as a mens rea term, rather we're using it in its specific legal definition, which is the foresight, the subjective foresight of a particular risk, and then going on unreasonably to run that risk. Okay, so in terms of general advice then about when we're looking at mens rea terms, the first one is an area of caution. Now, mens rea terms, as I said, are foundational, they're very much a building block for the rest of the criminal law, so we tend to teach them in the early lectures of a criminal law module. Now, this also tends to be the time where students making notes tend to do so more fully, they write down more and more. As the module goes on, you perhaps get better at filtering, you get better at highlighting key points. Also, when we're teaching, we tend to teach these terms in terms of their historical progression. These are common law concepts, the definition of mens rea terms, and so we tend to say the various case law that's developed and outlined the definitions. Now, this is useful. It's useful for your general knowledge, both of those things, the detailed notes and the historical progression, but it also creates a bit of a danger sometimes. So first of all, in relation to essay questions, if an essay question asks you about the satisfactory nature of a particular mens rea term or its development, then of course you can draw on all of that wealth of knowledge in order to engage with that question and in order to engage with that debate. However, when you're answering a problem question, you have to be a little bit careful here. And there are two things that you really need to remember, but the overriding so the theme is that you need to focus on the current law and be careful not to be caught into telling a story about the historical progression of the law. If you're being asked about potential liability at this moment in time, then it's the law at this moment in time that you need to be applying. So let's say, for example, a couple of things that outline, particularly in relation to intention. First of all, we have a scenario whereby a defendant, um, I don't know, in some kind of gangland shooting, uh, executes a, a victim, executes a rival as part of a gang dispute, and it's very clear that they're doing so as a kind of a revenge attack. Now, in that scenario, if you're asked to identify potential liability, then of course it involves someone dying, so you would start off by looking at murder. And for murder, of course, when it gets onto the mens rea, you're looking for an intention to kill or cause grievous bodily harm. Now, it's very tempting and it's also very common for students to look at that and then think, OK, intention, when I was looking at the definition of intention, we spent a long time looking at oblique intention and woolen, and you start talking about whether it's a virtual certainty that the person's going to die, whether it's foreseen as a virtual certainty, whether intention will be found. Now, in relation to that scenario, that discussion is not necessary. It's a direct intention. It's very clearly that the person has shot the other person with the direct, the purpose of killing them. Therefore, if it's simple, try and keep it simple in your analysis as well. Although you've spent a lot of time, perhaps, uh, learning about oblique intention, in that scenario, a court wouldn't engage with that wider understanding of intention because there's no need to. There's quite straightforwardly a direct, purposeful intention to kill the other. And so you can simply draw the attention to that within your answer to the problem question, and you don't need to go forward to then look at oblique intention as well. Another scenario might be where a defendant shoots the victim, this time not because they want them to die, but rather because they want them to get out of the way so that they can make their escape or something like that. Now this time there is, if we're again analysing murder, this time there is some uncertainty about what their purpose was. Their purpose, the defendant's purpose, might not have been to kill or to seriously harm, but rather to simply shoot at in order to allow an escape. 
And so in that sense, you might have some doubt about whether there is a direct intention. And so quite rightly in that scenario, where there's an element of doubt, you would then go on to look at the wider definition of intention, which includes oblique intention as well. And of course you would apply woolen, is it virtually certain, did the defendant foresee it as virtually certain that the victim would either die or suffer from serious bodily harm, and then looking at whether the jury are likely to find intention. Now importantly when you're doing that, you're correct to apply oblique intention, but you don't need to take me through the historical catalogue of all the various offences or all the various cases which have helped develop the law to the state it is today. But rather, if you're answering a problem question, it's about applying the law as it stands. So when you're applying and when you're necessarily discussing oblique intention, that's a discussion of woolen. It's not a discussion of the historical cases, which applied variable standards over the years. So the point here, the overall headline, is when you're applying these mens rea terms, do so in relation to the current law. If the question, essay question or problem question, asks you to engage with the historical development, of course you should do so, and that knowledge is important. But when it's simply asking you to assess liability, do so as simply as possible and in relation to the law as it stands. Thank you.